Are you looking to purchase this year and wondering what it's going to take for a down payment? Well, hey, everybody, we're joined today with Rhonda Johnson, and she's going to go over the ups and downs of how we're going to all get into a home this year and what type of money we need for a down payment. Hey, Rhonda, how are you? Hey, Melissa, doing excellent. How are you? So... I have buyers right now that are just a little bit overwhelmed by what this word down payment means because they hear lots of different information. What is a down payment for a house? So the down payment is kind of your injection into this investment that you're making. So it's your cash investment on buying your asset, your home, and then we're going to finance the rest of it for you. And you're right, Melissa, I hear this an awful lot. You know, I don't have 20% to put down, so I can't buy a house. I'm still saving for my 20% down. And first of all, we just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, there are some zero down options that are government uh, sponsored loans with VA, of course, and USDA. And then we have some super low down payment loans like HUD 184 is two and a quarter percent. FHA is three and a half percent. And then we have conventional loans with anywhere from three plus percent down. So we have some really low or zero down payment loans. But if you end up needing a loan that does have a down payment, what are some of those sources that those funds can come from? So one thing at this time of year we're recording in February is that a lot of people are getting ready to file taxes. So if you're going to be getting a tax refund, then this is a great time to really think about investing that money that you get back from the IRS that you typically overpaid and investing it into a house instead of the IRS to use it all year long. So your tax refunds are a possibility. Um, of course, you've got savings. Some people still have their PFDs, and so those are a totally acceptable source. But one thing, Melissa, that I wanted to remind people of is that if you work for a company that allows you to put money into a 401k, and do a retirement account, then those are funds that are still your money that you can use. Now there's two different ways that they can be used. One is you can just take a withdrawal, just pull the money out. But when you do that, because it went in pre-taxed, then you're gonna pay a penalty for early withdrawal and you're gonna pay the taxes on it. Another option with those funds is you can borrow from your own self. So you can borrow from your retirement account. The great thing about borrowing from yourself is that you're paying your own self back interest. There's no prepayment or there's no withdrawal penalty and you're not paying taxes on it because you're just borrowing it. So some of the drawbacks with that are that that amount of funds are not being invested out there in the market. So you're not getting any gains, but you're also not getting any losses because you already borrowed it out of your account. <clears throat> um, so, and most plans will allow you to do up to 50% of what you've put into it, up to a maximum of $50,000. So it's a really good source of money that you might not believe that you can have access to, but check with your plan manager and see if you do have access to it. So what I hear you saying is, you don't really need 20% down today in order to purchase a home, that there are many low down payment options. And what we need to do as real estate agents is connect our buyers with solid quality loan officers, loan originators, in order to have that conversation and figure out where could those source of funds come from for that down payment. In one of the first shows we did this year was what the standard appreciation rate has been. And in Anchorage, I believe it was more than 5%. So again, when you think about taking money out of a 401k and using that as a down payment on your new home, it's not like you're losing money, you're actually putting it into an investment that will return you money in the end. Right, and you're, and, and you're not losing the money because you're paying it back. You're just borrowing from your own self, but you're paying yourself back with interest. So are there any other tips? If, if you haven't listened to our show that we did on how perhaps if you just stopped drinking three lattes a day and maybe narrowed it down to one, or maybe stopped popping by that gas station and picking up those random items, definitely not going through the drive-throughs, 
you could actually be saving money for your down payment. 401k, your um, PFDs, and also now it's February, so tax refunds. So those are some great sources for down payment. Anything else, Rhonda? Well, and then just kind of take a look at your budget. So I have a lot of folks that we've done this with and just looked at, you know, track for one day, two days, three days, exactly what you spend your money on and see if buying a home is really that important, which it should be, then looking for areas each day that you might uh, spend money that maybe you didn't need to. Maybe you could pack a lunch or bring your cup of coffee from home. So uh, yeah, just look at your budget, look at what you do spend your money on and see if there's anything, at least until you buy your home, that you might be able to reduce and save a little bit. So if you guys have any questions, please put it in the comments. We're happy to answer questions. At the end of this video, you will see our screens that show our contact information. Rhonda and I both live and work in Alaska. We sell real estate every day in Alaska. Rhonda does loans every day all over Alaska. And we actually do answer our phones. We respond to email. And so we'd love to hear from you guys. Again, any of your questions, please feel to re uh, feel free to reach out. We'd love to chat with you. Follow me on all my social media sites um, under Melissa Harmel Realtor. And we look forward to chatting with you next week.